everybody. This is Ellen with Live Your Jam. I'm here with Terry Blankenheim McGuire, my college roommate from University of Dayton, a fellow flyer. Welcome, Terry. Well, oh, thank you. Glad to be here, Ellen. It's so good to have you. Yeah, so thanks. everybody, um, Terry and I went to college together and I had the opportunity to see her recently in Wisconsin and was talking about our lives. And Terry told me a story that kind of knocked me off my um, feet. And I said, would you please come on and talk to everybody? Um, as you know, or I do inspirational jam stories. So those are stories about people mm -hmm. who are living a life that's intentional. They take what they're passionate about and their skills, mix mm -hmm. it all together, and they go out in the world and uh, live their jam. What I've found is most people, when they're doing that, are often helping other people. Uh, it's just the way it works. So Terry's story is no different and um, it's super inspiring and I'm not surprised um, knowing who she is and haven't had the pleasure of knowing her for a long time now. Um, so I wanna talk to you just about, set it up Terry and let everybody know. Terry's a 25 year educator at University of Dayton. She was a, um, an education major. She's taught in affluent suburbs in Chicago uh, in, in big districts there and ultimately decided to focus her career on inner city schools and help uh, children and students um, who, who she felt um, really drawn to help and support and educate. And now she has been working um, in around Kenosha, Wisconsin area for the last 13, 14 years as an mm -hmm. educator there, helping right. just that kids in the inner city. So welcome Terry. Again. Thank you, Ellen, that was so thoughtful, such a kind introduction, I appreciate that. You're welcome. So I, well, let's get this going. So um, tell us a little bit about what your jam is, where your passion and skills lie, and then how you put that to work. Um, well, as you mentioned, I have been an educator for 25 years. Um, and with that kind of level of experience, I guess, working in so many different schools and areas, and especially in the inner city, um, I have determined that my jam really is not just educating the child in terms of academics, um, but I truly believe in educating the whole child. And when I say that, I mean that not only through the lens of a mother of four, but as a teacher, I really feel like in order to make a difference, not just a ripple, but to really make a wave of a difference in the development of a child, I feel that we need to not only focus on just the academics, as mentioned, but the mental, the social, the emotional um, development of a child. And we're limited by some of that, obviously, um, as educators. But I had an opportunity um, through this nonprofit that I will share with you that I was able to do some of that and see the results and the impact that it had on me as a teacher and the impact it had on my students was just incredible. And when you say do just that, Terry, I heard you describe it to me so many times and that's talking about this incredible story is you're talking about really educating the whole child. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, as a, as a parent and as a teacher, Educating the whole child to me is if you really want to see your children or your students thrive and be able to become independent, be able to become good, hardworking members of society, I feel that there's so many different pieces of a child. And very often when you talk about the academics, which is really what teachers focus on, you're focusing on the nuts and bolts of introducing, introducing lessons. But our children are complex people. And you know, knowing that a kid is getting straight A's at school, but he might be having some emotional problems or he might be having some social problems or working in an inner city, very often their home life is very, very challenging for them. And so all these other pieces of their overall development and wellness are such roadblocks for a lot of educators um, and reasons why we're not making the growth that we need to see in our kids. And so very often, inner city teachers like myself become very um, sh you know, shocked and frustrated, I should say, by the, by the lack of impact that we can make, just being very dedicated teachers. And like I said, for having done this job for 25 years, um, when I had an opportunity to do something to really make a difference and to kind of help develop the whole child, um, I ran to it. 
And yeah. that really was, like I said, that was really kind of me living out my jam of what I wanted to do, um, making an impact as an educator. Yeah, that gave me chills when you talked about your passion for that. And um, I just so appreciate that approach. So tell us about it. I know that it all started with an email. So many of us don't look at all of our emails and I yeah. know who did and what a kind of serendipitous or like no coincidence moment. So tell us about the email that it got us really, Honestly, Ellen, it really was. You know, I, I think about it was after Christmas break, I had probably 200 emails. Um, I was pretty much going through all of them and deleting, deleting, deleting. And I happened to come across one that was from an organization out in Colorado. And they partner with different mountains around the country. And it was an opportunity for me to take my students for a five week skiing program out to Wilmont Mountain, which is in Wisconsin. Um, the skiing program was gonna involve semi-private lessons, all the gear, um, all the lift tickets, and all the semi-private instruction, the food, uh, transportation. I mean, I couldn't say no. I just couldn't say no. And piggybacked when this opportunity came, it was at the tail end of COVID. Um, Kenosha had just gone through some riots. Um, I had bullet holes in my school building. Like the, the children that were coming to me that January were like a shell of a human. And it worried me. And so, as I said, I mean, wow, what a great opportunity. I cannot just delete this. And so I called Colorado. I found out the details. Um, I called my principal. I convinced him that this was something that we should do. And that got the ball rolling. Um, interestingly enough, I quickly typed out 25, 30 permission slip forms, all the information, everything sent at home with all of my kids saying, I'm going to take you guys skiing. This is going to be the most incredible thing. I can't wait to do this with you. And not one permission slip came back <laughs> and I, honestly it exactly shocked the response that you you were it it shocked it, the heck out of me i i couldn't believe it but if you think about it you know the marginalized societies in our cities they don't have experiences with skiing and snowboarding this is not something they do and in fact i'm not a big skier or snowboarder myself skiing yeah no yeah so this wasn't even something i was necessarily promoting it was about the fact that I was taking them someplace off of their city blocks. Yeah, and I was and giving them something yeah. to I'm be sorry. able to develop as a child, as a person. Tell me more about the program. So the program basically is called SOS Outreach. It is a nonprofit that's based in Colorado, and they have been in existence for 30 years. They have been working on um, reaching out to kids trying to give them these experiences that are laced also with a curriculum, teaching them courage and discipline and integrity and, and wisdom. And all of these core curriculum um, ideas are partnered with these five weeks of skiing. And not only do they start teaching them how to ski, but then when they come back the next year, then they partner them with mentors throughout the community. And so Ellen, what started out as me doing this for one year um, with 30 kids, they asked me to come back the following year and word spread. I was able to bring in more youth agencies and schools and we had upwards of 150 kids. The next year, last year, we were able to bring in 200 kids and roughly 50 volunteers and mentors. So this grew really, really fast. And the impact was was huge. I I can't even begin to describe what an impact this made on myself and the students in the community from virtually an email. So tell me, I, I mean, it's great because I know you, over the three year span, you like more than tripled. And but what, yeah, what people usually crazy. think about you know teachers as being salespeople because I know you had to land a big. Um, Kind of international uh, sponsor, but talk yeah. about what you learned about yourself and whether what other skills that you found that you had. I find that when most people go out and, and begin with things they're passionate about, um, they learn a lot more about themselves as well and what they're capable of. So, what was it like for you? 
Yeah, that's a great question, Ellen, because, you know, I always kind of pigeonholed myself as thinking that I was a, an educator and that's really all I've done for 25 years. And suddenly I kind of came into this role of organizing something that was so large and huge on a scale that I had never envisioned. I had to figure out transportation. I had to contact principals. I had to contact um, different youth agencies and build connections with them. I had to do a lot of public speaking um, because I was involved with getting all sorts of different organizations involved on either a fundraising level or building up a huge mentor program. Um, and like I said, there was a level of sales. Like I had to convince these kids that they wanted to do this. I had to convince these principals that this is something they wanted to do. Um, in, in the state of Wisconsin, you know, we don't have mountains here. You know, we don't have, like our heart is not, thinking that this is what we always want to do. In the winter time, many of our inner city kids and just people in general are inside. They're, <laughs> they're hunkering down for the winter. So yeah. I had a, a lot of convincing to do on many different levels. And so I felt like I was doing some sales there as well. Um, I, I loved the fact that through this entire program, I started to see myself in a different way that I had schools that or skills that were even beyond the classroom. Yeah, and the tenacity too also, I mean, amazing, like the fundraising, public speaking, you know, transportation expert, yeah. or organizational skills. And you got through all those challenges and not only grew the program, um, it's just really a, a wonderful story. So what for you in particular was so joyful about all of this? Like, where did you find the joy and the fulfillment? Clearly it's obvious in that you're now having the opportunity to work with the whole child and make an impact. But what was it for you personally? Well, I would say that for me, probably the biggest joy was, as I had mentioned before about developing the whole child, I really have not ever had the opportunity to do that beyond the classroom. And what I found that was so impactful to me as an educator is that, for example, one of our core curriculums was, was courage. And so week one was based on having courage. And so getting up there, um, learning how to put down, put on skis, um, going up these hills, falling, getting back up, feeling scared, looking at the hill, looking at the mountain, trying to wrap their brain. These little 10 year olds are trying to wrap their brain around what they're doing, learning what courage really is, and then coming back to the classroom and seeing that transfer into having courage in the classroom. When you don't understand something, raising your hand, taking risks. Um, week two, the word was discipline. What does discipline look like? Continuing to do something over and over and over again when you want to give up. And if you can do that on the hill and you can show us what that looks like to stick with something because you want to learn a skill to be able to come back into the classroom and have that same sense of discipline. And now it's a word that actually, it's a vocabulary word that actually speaks volumes because they understand it to the core. And I loved that as an educator, that's the joy that I could not even put into words of what that felt like to say, you are showing courage right now. You can do that in every aspect of your life. You are showing discipline by not giving up on this skill when you bring that back to the classroom, we're not going to give up on ourselves. We're going to do the same thing in the classroom. That to me was like a level of joy I really had not experienced as an educator. That's so awesome. I think, you know, what, you. I, what I'm what i feeling now is, and I want to get, the, I want to know this because you've always been, uh, you know, a smart, upbeat, you know, uh, loved nature, loved exercise, somebody that always really brings, um, lightness and 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 fun and challenge to life so what are your what are your strategies for people living a fulfilling life like you've you know you're a mother of four you know you chose inner city schools you grew this program so much so that now they had to hire somebody so you're yeah. yourself out of a uh we'll talk about what's next but what what would advice would you give to people who want to live a fulfilling life an intentional life all of the things that jam is sort of uh, made of well, I feel that um, one of the things that I would honestly say is, you know, I, I mentioned I've been an educator for 25 years. So I could have really probably just 
done me and rolled into the sunset, you know, with just being an educator. But I, I took a risk and I used the experience of what I had to give me an opportunity that honestly, like it was, a, I felt that it was almost a whisper. I, 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 it, my heart kind of like, I had an, a curious kind of almost inquisitive interest in that email and I I ran with it. I followed it. I just kept going to do something that honestly, I probably could have just said, I'm not interested. This isn't for me. This is too much work. Um, I'm not interested in getting involved. So listening to that whisper, taking a risk, kind of leaning into that fear a little bit, I would say would be like maybe a word of advice. Um, you know, because I did say, I did feel, honestly, in the three years that I did participate in this program, I did feel like I I sensed um, so much excitement and such a vibration of just constantly feeling satisfied and proud of what we had been able to accomplish that um, even if I never do this again, you know, I, I know what this felt like. And I know that this is something that I am super proud of about myself. And as I mentioned before, it gave me an, even an opportunity to look at myself a little differently. I didn't even really know I had it in me to do something with public speaking and fundraising and sales and, um, and just getting involved in the world a different way, being able to inspire others. Um, and it all came through an email. So I guess I my only advice really would be to kind of listen to those whispers and those opportunities. And if you do feel like it's right to run towards it. Oh, that's so wonderful. I, I think, you know, such great advice for everybody too. I do find that those whispers, I like to say it's our soul telling us, yeah. nudging us. And it comes from the heart. The heart is the bridge to the soul. And then what you said about leaning into the fear and just being open to going for it. Really, really good advice. And um, look what you created. So what's next for you, Terry? Well, you know what? I am, um, I'm just diving into one of my last years of school um, as an educator. Um, I'm looking forward to another opportunity like this, hopefully um, to kind of find me and or for me to find it um, and to just bring my passion and level of experience and uh, interest in getting involved with developing children and, and uh, mentoring relationships with kids um, into the future. It's, I, it's such a great story and I'm so glad that you shared it with me. And, I, and we'll put some information at the end of this in SOS Outreach, which is a national nonprofit that Terry um, have created this Kenosha skiing um chapter and now huge over 300 person uh kind of uh, volunteer organization um uh, so i look forward i know that the next thing is going to find you or you're going to find it and i really appreciate you sharing your story with us today thank you ellen i appreciate you asking me to share all right bye everybody from terry and ellen go flyers see ya